And what's going on, guys? It's Skullside back again. Skullside cast. We are in this episode just going to be going over the Houston Texans game and then looking onward towards the Sunday night showdown against Seattle, which we are all very excited for. It should be a fireworks show in Seattle that night for the third straight year in Seattle on a primetime game, which is just great. But anyways, I mean, they've heard me all week. If you guys want to just say what's up and give your thoughts on the first victory for the Vikings against the Texans. <laughs> what's up, School Nation? Uh, yeah, I mean, nice to see a victory on Sunday. Uh, you know, I thought the offense uh, looked, looked pretty well, it did, or did pretty well. Uh, you know, I think that's the recipe for success for the Vikings, you know, getting Cook, uh, running the ball well, and then, you know, getting that play action going. That's what uh, it's best. We've seen it before. Uh, you know, when he has to go back in the shotgun, you know, and they're you know they're not running the ball well. It's you know you just you can tell he's not comfortable uh, in the shotgun. But you know, I, I thought it was a, a overall good game. I think Kirk still missed some throws. And like we were talking about before we got here, you know, just some th- throws are like head scratchers. Like how do you stop? How do you not throw that ball? But you know, after that sack, I think it was in the third quarter. You know, he did make some big throws in the fourth quarter. You know, Cook's been great the last two games and. I thought the deep played a little better too. Uh, overall, uh, secondary besides the you know classic Zimmer prevent uh, D in the fourth quarter, uh, the corners looked pretty good. You know I thought they looked a lot better, and the D line still a problem though with the pass rush. But you know overall, you know it was good to see a win. You guys didn't know uh, Mike Zimmer went back to his ranch. He took a victory tractor ride on Monday <laughs> after the Vikings won. He had his whiskey, his Gosh. rifle. He had his Crocs on, and he was riding around his tractor for winning the game. Yeah, even though his defense still gives up 30 points a game, he was still riding around. He was very excited. That's in right. heaven. Um, good, to get, good to get off the schneid. Uh, we are, uh, we're officially on Viking win streak alert. Two, I think two wins is a win streak. Um, but um, it, was, um, it was good to see the offense. I know we haven't talked since uh, – we haven't had one of these since yeah. uh, before the Titans game, so – um, it's two weeks in a row the Vikings offense scored 30 points. Um, there's still some things that are a little concerning um, offensively, but um, it was good. It, it, I mean, Cook got 27 carries. That was nice to see. Um, and, you know, I know he kind of got – I don't want to say he got hurt at the end of the game, but he had to come out for a little bit. Maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. Um, but so far, so good for him. Um, and Justin Jefferson uh, only had four catches, but oh, when you have 100 yards on four catches, you're pretty good. So, uh, good win, Kirk. I, he was, I guess he was, he was, he was good on Sunday. I mean, I, you know, it's just watching. Just it's so frustrating. I text you guys during the game, and I know I say Kirk stinks sometimes, and I, I don't mean that he's a bad quarterback, but there are just plays on third down where I. I I mean, there was one where Jefferson's – it was – Pat, you texted. It was a corner he, route play. Yeah, it was a corner route. And then there was another one where he threw – it was third and six, and he threw a three-yard pass to Thielen. Yeah. And it was fourth and three, and they have settling for a field goal. And he had Jefferson going to the corner route yeah. on the pylon, and he put his arm up, yeah. and, you know, he didn't hit him. You know? And then that play at the end of the game, um, third and six, where he throws short to Thielen, that would have ended it. That we all had to live through the Vikings playing prevent defense and letting mm-hmm. the Texans down to the one. And if the Texans have a better head coach, or if David Johnson doesn't drop a pitch, you know, who knows what we're talking about right now. But good to get a win. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought the game went pretty smoothly for the Vikings. Kind of what they wanted to do. I thought the Harrison Smith uh, ejection kind of changed the tide of the defense because I mean you're putting George Iloka in, who hasn't really played a real snap in about two years, and going against one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the league. And they also have a lot of speed. I mean, he pretty much gave up two touchdowns, which was rough to see. Yeah. Offensively, I mean, my only problem with the offense was, like, I mean, Kirk just needs to let it rip. I mean, we saw that throw he had to Rudolph, like, back shoulder, like, running back, just kind of chucked it up. I mean, Rudy can go make a play, and Rudy's not even one of our best players at doing that. I mean, give yeah. Jefferson a chance. We I mean, everybody sees it. Like, you, like, listen, if you even just look at stats, you see it. But if you watch the tape on this kid – I think he's special, and I think we need to get him the ball more. I mean, him and Thielen really complement each other well, and I love what the Vikings are doing on offense when the other team's getting a pass rush, block eight, and then have those two run crossing routes because they put a lot of speed and a lot of pressure on that DB and corner or DB and safeties. 
But, I mean, I thought Kubiak is kind of getting the, thing, uh, getting in the hang of calling plays again. I mean, we forget he's kind of been out of the game from calling plays for a little bit. Obviously struggled against the Colts, but I don't know. I thought it was overall a really good team win. I love seeing special teams getting involved because I think that shows, like, you're not quitting on your coach. And I think a lot of, like, you start 0-3, obviously not what you wanted. If you go make a play on special teams, it shows that everybody's still kind of buying in and they still believe in the locker room. They can win. Um, but I mean, besides that, I mean, I thought it was just a classic Vikings kind of victory. Like we, like Jim and Michael, you guys said, we go prevent, we give ourselves a heart attack, but I thought uh, it was good. You know, it was, they're up 31 to 16 and they take control of the game. They had nice, two, two nice touchdown drives. And yep. look, I mean, I don't know what you guys thought, but I know the Texans just fired Bill O'Brien and, you know, everyone, um, you know, gives Bill O'Brien a hard time and rightfully so. I mean, the guy is calling plays. He was the GM. He was the head coach. It's too much. You know, he traded to Andre Hopkins. You know, he just kind of get it, got in over his head, I think. Um, but the Texans, you know, they, at times, I thought they were going to quit on Sunday. I call like some, some instances, they really just, you know, kind of said, eh, you know. But just that, just that series where they had the Texans third and 23, and they're yes. up by 15, and they, they Fourth play, they time. rush three. And they give up a 13-yard dump off to the running back. Okay. And then they'll give up that fourth and 10 touchdown. You know, I saw a couple tweets saying, you know, they held Deshaun Watson 23 points. And that's true. And you knew that Watson was going to get, you know, going to get his at some point. But it can't happen. You can't – it can't come down to what what, uh, what happened at the end of the game. Like, you can't let a 15-point lead dissipate, you know, in a matter of – well, it was like eight minutes, you know. So, it just got to just gotta get better at the end. But – it's gonna. It's kind of hard because you know they don't have a pass rush really, or any consistent pass rush. And in those situations, you know, when you're trying to play, you know, you're you're rushing four, you're rushing three, and you're playing coverage. You know, if you don't have a pass rush, you know, then you know teams are they're gonna some quarterbacks are gonna just gonna pick you apart in those situations. So but that's kind of concerning to me. Still, they they need some pass rush. If Daniel Hunter's coming back this season, which, you know, doesn't sound good right now. Yeah. Here, let me let me ask you guys something. So I thought, you know, obviously we're going against probably one of the most dynamic wide receiver duos in the league this Sunday. I thought what Dantzler and Gladney showed me, you know, if you just look at, like, on paper and, like, what they're good at compared to what DK and Tyler are good at. Like, Dantzler, he's long, and he can, you know, cause problems for a bigger dude who doesn't really have guys who match up with DK's length all the time. He's normally going against 5'10 guys. Throw a guy on Dantzler, and he showed us a lot on Sunday for me. I thought Gladney, I feel like Gladney, you know, he's going to give up a big play. I mean, he's a rookie. He's going to give it up. But I like the way he hits. He doesn't make it easy. I, I don't know. What do you guys think about them heading into this weekend with that matchup? Probably Gladney on Lockett, probably Dantzler on DK. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be like a, a, a real good test for both of them, you know. Uh, obviously, the, you know, Titans don't really have any big name receivers, you know. Uh, technically, have Will Fuller, but there's, you know, they lost Hopkins obviously with, in that trade. Uh, so uh, they they haven't really seen like a like a receiver receiving core like this before. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. I do think Dancer can match up well with Metcalf because yeah, he's long. You know, we'll just we'll see if like I you know he's so skinny, but you know his length should match up well with him. We'll see if he can. You know, I think he's got to get up and press. You know, yeah. let him get physical with him. You know, don't let him get off the line of scrimmage and. I think the same, uh, you know, against Lockett, too. He's, he's fast. I think that's, like you said, Pat, before we got on this call, I think he's more of a concern yep. just because he's so fast, you know, and we'll see. I mean, I, I like the potential of Gladian Dancer. They've shown flashes. You know, they're still rookies, so there's not going to be – they're not going to be consistent. You know, they're going to give up plays. So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm interested to see how it goes for sure. Yeah, Pat, to what you said, I think, you know, we're all going to have to accept that the Vikings are going to give up maybe one to two big – plays per game yeah. um and it, it's in the last two weeks it's been gladney um you know i've i've watched the watch both of those plays and you know the coaching staff has said that the safety's bit up on you know georgia Ioka was in on the play this past weekend for the yeah. texans um that big play the Vikings actually held them to a field goal on that drive so that was good um but yeah i think this is kind of the group you know mike Hughes is back at practice today i think this is kind of what we wanted to see gladney and dantzler on the outside and mike hughes in the slot um you know these three guys on the field i mean holton hill i 
I don't know about Holt Hill. He should be cut. Um, I mean, we're not draft a guy who had, who had some issues. <laughs> um, who had some issues last year? Um, you know, off the field issues. You know, there was a reason they kept him. I'm still waiting to see what that reason is. Um, so we'll see. I, I, I but I, I think um, for um, for Dantzler, this is gonna be this it's is gonna be him. this is just yeah, gonna be really good. good for Dantzler and Gladney because yeah, like you know, whatever happens this season with the Viking. Um, Pat, I know you got. I know both of you are on the Tank Trevor yeah. bandwagon. Now that the Vikings beat the high and mighty Texans, you guys are back on the nine and seven playoff round. I'm, I'm, I'm ready um, to go. I, I well, never said that. Happens, <laughs> <laughs> I said that. I'm fully ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm still ready, ready to play for Trevor. I just don't think it's going to happen. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, any, uh, you know, whatever happens, Joe, these guys being out there, you know, these are the kind of, these are the tests that they need to have this season. You know, the very least, you just hope the Vikings are competitive. Uh, but yeah, Gladney Dancer is a good matchup for them, and hopefully they're physical, just like Mike said. Yeah, I mean that's, I mean that's definitely something that's going to be key. Also, I think this game, obviously, there's going to be points. Vegas is not going to set a line at 59. Both teams will probably score over 20. I just think it comes. Both teams defensively are kind of, kind of terrible right now. It's just yeah. we have Eric Kendricks and Harrison Smith. They got Jamal Adams and Bobby Wagner. It really just depends. I think will Harrison make a play? Will he have a big interception? Will he cause a fumble? Like it's gonna come. Will Unique get a key strip sack? Like he's shown to do. I think it's just gonna come down to a certain plays like that, certain key third down stops. And what sucks is that's what Russell Wilson is really good at. When it's like a third, like when you think, oh, here's our chance. Here's our chance to get a stop. Get off the field. He'll run for a quick first down or hit you over the top. That's something that the Vikings really just can't let happen because they don't really have a lot of room for error. Now, also, I think the Vikings have a really, like, not a really good chance, but I think they have a chance to win this game on Sunday just off the offensive Uh-oh. firepower. He's I want to pick them. No, <laughs> the Vikings this Listen, weekend. Maybe, maybe I'm convincing myself, but that's on the bandwagon. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I want. I want this game in the hands of the offense. If it's late in the game and we're trying to – and let's just say we have a two-score lead in the fourth quarter like we've had in the past two games, and it's maybe fourth and one and we're on the other team's 40, I want to go for that. I want the ball in the hands of Cook and the offense and not the young corners, even though it will be great experience. That's the only thing I want to see is if we do have a lead, keep the pressure on. Like I know Cook is great, but hit play action because everybody in the world knows we want to go with the Dalvin Cook. That's what I want to see offensively. I don't know. What do you what do you guys expect to see offensively or some things? Also, I want to see Irv Smith get the fucking ball. Like, excuse my language, but <laughs> damn. I mean, we spent the second-round pick on him last year. Get him something. I don't know. Thoughts on offense heading into Seattle? Yeah, I mean, just like, honestly, like, the last two games at least have been, like, watchable. So, I'm just asking for a watchable game on its prime time. Yep. You know how Kirk, Kirk's been on prime. He could... You could have some, uh, could be a dumpster fire sometimes with Kirk yeah. on prime time, but, uh, you know, just give yeah, him some watchful, you know, I mean, I think the key, like, uh, to success is you got to get Delvin, Delvin going early, uh, and then you got to get the play action going. I think that's going to be key. Uh, I think the Seahawks are good against the run. That's one thing they're good at. So if the Vikings can get the, you know, the run game going, you know, get that play action going, that will help a ton. Cause like I said early, you know, that's the key to Viking success, you know, getting Cook going, he's running the ball. Control the uh, the clock, you know. Control the time of possession in the game, you know. Get that play action going, so those receivers can run those deep routes. And that's when Kirk's at his best. It's it's already been proven. And uh, we can't, you know, we just can't get behind early. And we're passing, you know, in the shotgun because our offense line can't hold up. We've already proven that, you know. It's been proven they can't hold up, you know, in games like that, yep. you know. So, uh, yeah, just want to see, you know, a watchable game. You know, I think it's going to be a shootout. You know, obviously the Vikings want to win. They have to score 30 points. I feel like that's going to be like every game this year. They're going to have to score 30, yep. you know. So, uh, but, yeah, just trying to, you know, let's not some watchable, you know. And like you said, get Irv Smith the ball. I don't know what they're doing. And he's not gotten the ball all year. It just makes no sense to me. He's a second-round pick. And he's, look, he's quick, too. You know, I'm look, I'm thinking, like, you know, they're passing the ball to Rudolph. I'm thinking, like, they're getting, if they get Irv Smith the ball, who knows? He could probably go 10 or 15 more yards than Rudolph. So, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, I think um, for the Vikings, I, um, the big concern for me is what if they don't get the running game going and cut, it turns into Cousins sitting in the shotgun and we all see that movie before. It doesn't usually end well. Um, 
But I, what I think what the Vikings can do more too, they started doing it in the Tennessee game. Um, you know, they would kind of do have Cousins under center, and you do those three step three step drops and get the ball out and get it to Jefferson. I mean, get the I mean, keep getting him, getting him the ball, man, because it's good. I mean, even if he catches five six yards behind the first down marker. There's a good chance he's going to get those five or six yards after he catches. He's really good with running after the cat. So, um, yeah, the Vikings are going to have to score. Uh, hopefully, I, I hope Mike Zimmer realized that by now, that the Vikings have to score points to win. Um, we'll see what they're able to do defensively. Again, you know, one thing I, I, I guess, you know, they played Seattle last two years, you know, you sometimes got to be careful rushing Russell Wilson. Because obviously, if you rush and he kind of just gets out of the pocket, he could really hurt you. Uh, that might be one thing we don't have to worry about. Since the Vikings don't really have a pass rush, you know, yeah. Russ Wilson could just stay in the pocket. So I don't know if that's going to be the game plan. You know, the Seahawks are Seahawks are throwing the ball a lot more this year. You know, I know they've had Russ Wilson; he's always been like an MVP candidate. But you know, the Seahawks last couple of times they have played the Vikings, they've really run the ball a lot. And so far this year, they've let it, Russell air it out. Um, and it's, you know, mostly because their defense hasn't been very good and they got to score. So, um, we'll see. I, um, I, I think the Vikings can, I think the Vikings can keep it competitive on Sunday night and hopefully they just have a chance to win, um, at the end, but yeah. I'm not picking them. I'll yeah. believe it when I see it with the, with, uh, cousins going on the road. Yeah. Here's a, here's a couple of key stats that I just want to give you guys, you know, live is, uh, you know, Vikings defense has been not what we've seen in the past, obviously, but there's one one thing that's kind of stayed, and they're second and third down percentage on defense yep. at 31.9 percent. Seattle's almost dead last at 51.9 on defense, and they're not good on offense either on third down. They're 23rd in the league on third down, and I think that listen in a big prime time game, every third down feels like it's the end of the world, and if the Vikings can just get off the field, get them in third and long they have a chance to get off the field because it's like even if – or hold them to three. Like holding them to three, this – like just get one third down stop. And I think they might have a chance because I don't think – Seattle. like I really don't think with how beat up Seattle is right now and like maybe when they're fully healthy. But they lost their best pass rusher against the Cowboys, uh, whatever his name is, Cliff Averill, or he's out for the year. Their secondary is banged up. Jefferson and Thielen, like, I just want to see Cousins give these guys a chance on third down. I don't care if it looks like they're covered and it's one-on-one. Throw them open. Give them a chance to go make a play. Put the game in their hands. Don't put it in you just taking a sack. Like, I'd rather have him throw a pick down the field than take a sack, and then it's just a complete demoralizer. I don't know. I think think third down is going to be absolutely key, and the stats right now show that it's in the Vikings' favor. However... Will the Vikings even get the third down against Seattle? And that's something that <laughs> is very likely Seattle might not face a third down with how their offense is rolling this year. I mean, they haven't scored less than 30 once. And also, all their games have been fairly close, and they came down to the end. And, I mean, we saw against New England, New England was two yards away from winning that game. And, I mean, I think this whole notion that they're unbeatable and they can't be beaten on a Sunday, I just don't – listen, I think Russell Wilson's great. I don't think their whole team is great. And if you probably look top to bottom, I bet you the rosters match up pretty well. We got two receivers that are really good. We got two running backs. They got two running backs. It's just a quarterback. And honestly, I hate saying it, but a lot of times in NFL, it comes down to Pete Carroll versus Mike Zimmer and Russell Wilson versus Kirk Cousins. And that's I, you could look at all the stats, but I don't know. I mean, you guys want to talk about just the head coach and quarterback combos heading into a Sunday night like battle. I mean, it's, I mean, it's scary for us. Yeah. There's uh they got, they got the big advantage there. I mean, uh, just the, the Seahawks, they just, they play for their, you know, they just play so hard. You know, I, I, like you said, they don't, they're all their games are usually close. You know, they don't usually blow teams out. You know, sometimes it's ugly, you know, it's been, it used to be in the past with the Seahawks. They used to rely on D a lot. You know, they used oh. to lot around D and they used to run from the ball a lot. By the way, Jamal Adams so, is out for the second straight game. He, he, he is not playing, so that's – I mean, that's a huge advantage for us offensively. Yeah, that, that helps a lot too. Uh, but, yeah, you, you've seen the Seahawks over the years. You know, they, they've won ugly. You know, they've won – they've relied on me in the past. Now they're relying on their offense, but they always seem like they play hard, you know, for their coach. Sometimes the Vikings, I mean, 
they don't come out, you know, ready to play. You know, they're flat. You know, they don't. They don't know what they want to be there. And I mean, obviously, Russ is just—he's unbelievable. Like, I mean, he's so much better than you know, Kirk. He just, yeah. just his pocket awareness. You know, being able to avoid pressures. You know, not panicking in the pocket. You know, just finding those you know spots that where he's comfortable. But I mean, that's it, it comes down to that. You know, I think that they have a huge advantage there. You know, in the end, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. You know, but. Uh, well, I think the only way the Vikings win, like I said, it's a good shootout. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a big advantage there, Pat. You're right. Yeah, the um, the last two years we've kind of seen this play out with Zimmer versus Carroll and Cousins versus Wilson. Um, you know the the thing with Seattle is, is yeah, Mike kind of pointed out I, for whatever reason. I'm not like they always just play extremely hard, and they they just you know, do things really there, even though I, I feel like, you know, the last couple of years, you know, going into these games with Seattle, I thought the Vikings have always had a huge advantage offensively. Like, I, I mean, they're maybe besides their offensive line, but you know, I know Seattle like clowny, but you know, besides him, has anyone really on their defensive line really scared you the past couple of years? Um, you know, anyone in their secondary has been, you know, you know, not, you know, not superb. I, I mean, so, you know, I. It's really just going to come down to um, can the um, can Cousins, you know, make those big throws to Thielen and Jefferson. You know, because the Vikings are able to make big plays, um, then they'll be able to stay in this game and have a chance to win. And that's really all I, I want to see on Sunday. Is you know, the Vikings get the ball, or you know, they're just in a, they're just a, they're in a spot where they have a chance to win in the fourth quarter. Now, with Zimmer head coach and Cousins quarterback. You know, it's a 50-50 toss. That means they're going to win if they have a chance in the fourth quarter. Yes, but, um, look, if um, if the Vikings do want to get back in this, you know, they got to win They, they got to win a game like this. Yeah. Um, you know, they put themselves in a, you know, I, I know that, you know, what we think, what they're going to end up this year. But, you know, probably to, you know, to Zimmer, I, I definitely think Zimmer, you know, I think he still thinks he can make the playoffs. And, you know, if he wants to do that, you know, he's got to win a game like this. And look to Seattle on Sunday, then they have the Falcons at home, and then they have a bye. So, you know, three and three. if you're – yeah, I mean, if you're looking to get back into things, you really want to be three and three because after the bye, it, uh, it they have – It gets easier. Three, yeah, it, it, gets, it gets easier, but you do have three straight division games. That's two road games in Green Bay and Chicago. Yeah. So – you know, that's really, really interesting. You'd like to be in a position where you say you're in it when you're going into those games. Um, but, yeah, they, they, they got to win a game like on Sunday if they think they're going to get back in this thing. Yeah. All right, Seattle, uh, they're giving up 393 passing yards per game, which, I mean, I get we want to establish Cook, but I think we kind of got to use the pass to establish the run on Sunday right away. I want to see a lot of play action on the first drive and then get Cook going. But, I mean, listen, get the 3-3. Three and three. I feel like that's got to be the mindset if you want a chance to salvage a season because then you go at Green Bay. Obviously, that's going to be brutal. That's going to be a very tough game. Best but team it, in the NFC right now. It, I mean, damn near. But then you're at home against the Lions, and then you're in Chicago. I know that's a nightmare, but I don't think Chicago oh. is the same team. Get but then you go, you go Cowboys, Panthers, and Jaguars all at home. If you could somehow be like, let's just say – four and five even heading into those three games like yeah you have a shot like you have a chance to get the seven and five yeah. and then it's a mm-hmm. then then they're in tampa bay which is tough but then you're at home against the bears and then you got the lions and saints which we don't really know with like the saints right now i mean it's just listen the vikings just need to like, just focus on this <laughs> sunday and then Pat, we'll look we got at your it. mind spinning. You're thinking wild card. I'm thinking, thinking seven the seven seed. seed right now, Pat. You're <laughs> thinking it. I know listen, you we had a, we, listen, we had a brutal start to the season. We have a young, <laughs> we have a young team and a tough schedule. We need to give this these guys a break. Oh, oh. God. Game, I'm taking it day, game by game. Yeah, game yeah, by I game. Yeah, give it a time, Pat. Well, also, you know they, well, also, there's no, there's no expectations anymore. 
No, you're right. Oh, if, yeah, you're if, right. But if they win on Sunday, you know it's going to be, oh, my God, the Vikings are Vikings are, Vikings are going to make a play, then, bro. And then, hey, how, how, how classy oh, would it be good. if they win on Sunday and lose at home to the Falcons before the bye? <laughs> that would be that could, I mean, that would be honestly <laughs> possible. I would. Zimmer had been heaven before. I mean, Zimmer. remember Denver last year before the bye of Cousins didn't pull off the game of his life. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I got no, one the classic. One, one, one thing I gotta fire. say is the one thing you know we t- we came on the show and we talked about the Packers off season and I you know right now they're making us look like fools you know we, and look not good. not just us but everyone on this draft um, after the draft and everything but um, yeah they're the best team in the NFC right now I'm worried I'm concerned Rodgers is back guys they're gonna He's break back. the scoring record. He's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they. I mean, they played the four worst defenses in the NFL. <laughs> and one of them's us. Yeah, well, one of them does. The Vikings. <laughs> I mean, the Vikings Falcons game. I mean, over under might be set at sixty five. I mean, <laughs> that would be a fun game to go to. That would be a hell of a game to go to if Minnesota were like fun. fans. But, <laughs> anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. We covered the Texans game, and then obviously got into the Sunday night show against Seattle. I think we all know what type of game it's gonna be. But who knows? I mean, anything can happen in any – every game's different. But expect a shootout and hold Russ under 30, and I think I like our chances. But we'll see. I mean, it's going to come down to the fourth, and that's when Cousins and Zimmer fail, and that's when Carroll and Wilson shine. Hopefully it's not like that on Sunday. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Leave a like, comment down below. See you guys later.